Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, let's keep our look at advanced split screening going, but let's take things again a little bit further. And what we want to do now is we've done some very basic animation with the footage that goes into our split screens. Well, when I say basic animation, we've really, really only applied the 3D warp tool to our footage and then positioned everything where we want it to go. But what we want to do now is we want to have our footage move in with our split screen elements. And this is a technique that in a lot of cases most people think again has to be done in a compositing application like Adobe's After Effects. When it really doesn't, all of this can be done with a little bit of thought inside of your Media Composer and Symphony timeline. Okay, short introduction here, let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's alt tab into Avid's Symphony, obviously a command and tab for all of my Mac friends out there. And as you'll see, I've already built an advanced split screen. Now, I haven't animated this element yet, but we're going to do that right now. Now, again, this was all created just inside the standard title tool. And let's start. We've actually got, this is going to be quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So let's step into effects mode, shift and Y. Again, my shortcut, effects mode also located right here in the composer window, right here at the top of your timeline. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did in the previous lesson. We're going to jump down to plus 24. Now, I think this one's going to come in from the left-hand side. So we're going to add a keyframe position for horizontal. Again, we're just going to add another one here. And we're just going to slide our element just outside of the frame like about such. Perfect. Okay, so second element here. Again, exactly the same thing, plus 24. Add a keyframe here again, back to the beginning. I think what we're going to do actually, we're, I'm just going to undo what I just did there. I'm going to come down here. What we're going to do is go plus 24, but we're actually going to have this on the vertical, not on the horizontal. Add keyframe. Just change, change things up a little bit here. Add keyframe. Let's just have this off the frame like such. Perfect. Now let's just make sure our animation is still in the first one, which it is. Perfect. Okay, so again, plus 24. Now this is going to come in from the right hand side, so this is going to be horizontal. So let's add a keyframe. Again, same thing. Add another keyframe. We're just going to slide this slightly off the frame, like about such. And our last element here is going to come in from the bottom, I think. Plus 24. Add a keyframe. Come back to the beginning. We should actually undo that, because we, as we know, we want to go plus 24 and we want to add it over here so we don't add it to everything in the timeline. Perfect. And of course, just slide this just slightly out of frame. And what we now have is all of our elements coming in like such. Now that's actually a very cool effect just like that. But what I want to do again is I'm just going to stagger this up. So we're just going to go down plus 24. Again, hold control, command on the Mac to snap everything down again, plus 24. Hold control again to snap everything down, plus 24. And there we go. So what we have is all of our elements sliding in one at a time. Very nice. Now let's just take the end of this off just like such. Now like I said before, what we want to do is we want to have all of our elements move in with our mats, not just have the mats reveal them like wipes, which is what we've been doing in the previous lessons. We want to step this up a little bit more and make this more of an advanced technique. Now in a lot of cases, what ends up happening if you're doing this instead of a compositing application it's lots of keyframing. Lots of keyframing is something that we don't want to do. Why? Because it's a lot of work. And the whole point is to get this done as quickly as we can and make it look as good as we can. So what do we do? Well, let's take a look at this first element here. What I'm going to do is just solo it by holding Control and Windows Command on the Mac and just see it slide in like such. Now, what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to double click on this effect because remember, a title is still an effect and you're going to see inside the title, we actually have two elements. Now, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm just going to double click on that again. I think I'm going to step into the title instead of double clicking on it because there's something I do want to show you in here. So I'm going to step into the title and you're going to see that one thing that we have inside is a graphic fill and the graphic fill is simply just white. What we also have inside the title is the mat that's cutting out that white. Now you'll see if I step out here, the element's white. So the fill represents that white color. Well, if that fill represents that white color, conceivably I could put anything in, in its place and this mat layer, the alpha mat right here, should actually cut that out to give us what we want. So let's see if that is actually the case. 
what we're going to do is I'm just going to take, um, why don't we take motocross here? Why not? So what we're going to do is just take, sure, let's take this shot here. I'm just going to select the entire shot. We've got quite a lot of our motorbike here, our motocross guy, so let's just select more of him. And what should happen now if I step out is that I should have that shot slide in. I do, look at that. Except there's something not right about this. I can only actually see the upper left-hand side of the shot, and, you know, that's not what we want. I want to actually position this biker sort of almost full frame in the window. Well, I guess we got to go to After Effects to do this, you know, because it's not really going to work inside a Media Composer and Symphony. Oh, come on, you know it's going to work inside Media Composer and Symphony. I wouldn't have teased it all the way up to this point if it wasn't going to work. So how do we do this? Well, again, I'm going to double-click on this title layer, and you'll see there's our video clip. So now what I'm going to do is hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. I'm going to grab this 3D warp, drag it and drop it onto that shot. We're going to step into effects mode. And what we're going to do is we're just going to scale this element down, just like such. You'll see as soon as I do it, now doesn't fill the entire frame that's being cut out. But if I take it and I move it, guess what we now have? We now have our biker dude, or our motocross dude here. I'm just going to delete that keyframe inside of this element. And of course, this element here moves onto the frame. Look at that. Very cool. I can just hit play and actually watch it in real time. So let's do the exact same thing for the next element. There we go. So again, exactly the same technique. Let's just find a shot to put in there. We're going to need sort of a shot. Even that's not too bad. I think that actually works pretty nicely. We'll take it from there. Again, what we can do is we can step into the element right down here with step in or just simply double click on it. We're going to patch in to that graphic fill layer. Do I have enough here? Well, let's just see here. We actually want to come all the way down to the end here. There we go. I don't have enough footage. That's okay. What we'll do is just come back a bit. Do I have enough now? Perfect. Now what we actually want to do here is overwrite this. Maybe what we'll do, I'm just going to step into it. Sometimes, like I said, it's easier to step in so you can actually see what's going on. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and there we go. That's awesome. Now, of course, what we're going to do is step out. And actually, you know, I don't even necessarily mind that. Just kind of like that. It actually works very nicely. So you can see there's one, there's the other. Now all we need to do is these last two here. Let's just find a couple more shots here. Sure, why not? We'll have these guys here come racing across the screen. Again, we're going to step into this footage. We're going to edit this clip in just like such. We're going to step out. I don't even mind that. But again, if I wanted to, I could obviously double click. We could take our 3D warp effect, simply drag it and drop it. We then get in. And in this case, you know, I could take the position and adjust the position however we wanted to. Kind of like such, maybe, so we can see the uh, BMX guy in red before we see the other guy start to come in. Look at that. Very cool. Okay, last one here. Again, double-click on this title to close it up. We're just going to come down to the bottom layer, step into it here. Uh, this is, again, sort of a very wide frame. Even this guy right here might work pretty well. So let's drop him in. T on the keyboard, B to drop him in. Let's step out. You'll see now he's a little bit high up in the frame. No problem. Double click. Let's come into 3D Warp. Take 3D Warp. Drop it onto the shot. All I'm going to do, again, step into effects mode. I'm just going to repo this shot kind of like that. And what do I have now? I not only have a really advanced split screen going on here where actually my footage moves in with the mats themselves, but I actually have it happening all in real time. Look at that. I didn't have to render one element. So again, you see with a little bit of forward thinking, you can get in and not only create this very cool animation with advanced split screens inside of Media Composer and Symphony, but you can actually take your footage and attach it inside those titles so that when you animate them, your footage moves in with the titles and it looks like it's something that was created in a high-end compositing application, but you know you did it all from within your Media Composer or Symphony timeline. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.